oversees it. Not you. How the CEO gonna be there? Because I don't know. It's not that I don't know. It's just because you have to help them. Because you need to hire more people, and you need to raise your damn rates. Because how can you hire people? So okay, so one hundred and fifty dollars. You have three people on your team who are being. I'm, I'm guessing in this scenario, they're getting paid thirty dollars. Right, so you're giving hundred and twenty dollars to your team. What do you get? Twenty dollars? Oh no, because you gotta pay taxes on that hundred and fifty dollars, and you gotta go get some supplies. Them sponges ain't gonna last forever. <laughs> you get a filter in that vacuum cleaner. <laughs> oh yeah, so that makes it all different. <laughs> so here, so do you see the problem? So, so the problem is. You are not price, you're not priced for anything. You're not even priced to perform the service. You're definitely not priced for profitability. So you have to raise your rates. So this is why I don't recommend just pulling numbers out of the air because you're gonna come up empty every single time. Okay, so here's the formula that I recommend. So first we're gonna take your direct costs. So your direct costs are like your cleaning, you know, your materials, your supplies, and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. No, that's not a direct cost. Okay. Um, then you're going to take your general and admin costs. General and admin is now, this is your team, mm -hmm. right? Then you're going to take your overhead. That's your insurance and bonding and licensing and all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Then you're going to figure out... For four people to be, well, okay, never mind. I'm just trying to pay. No, okay, so yeah, so you can figure it that way. Then you're going to add a percentage of profit to that. In order to, be, oh, you know what? We didn't account for. What am I missing? I'm missing something. Oh, yeah, okay. We forgot to put the hours in. So. Because you're actually there for 12 hours. You don't charge so that you only pay your people. Okay. You charge for your process, the way that you do the things that you do, what makes you unique for all of those other people. So that needs to be accounted for as well. Okay. okay? This profit percentage is the only variable. What do you mean by that, Darnell? Because you look like you don't know what I mean. <laughs> so this is the only thing that has the potential to fluctuate. Now. My personal recommendation, and this is for all of us, that we need to charge at 40 to 60% profitability. Okay. okay? You want to know why? Why? Because we got to pay taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't, or I don't recommend that you put taxes in these numbers. Because taxes don't have anything to do with whether or not a client hires you or not, right? So on average, you're probably going to pay about 15% taxes, right? You should reinvest something in your business. You should reinvest at least 5 to 10% in your business, okay. right? The reason why you want to reinvest in your business is because you're going to need new vacuums, and if you build out more team and, and to be able to hire people and all of that kind of stuff. Um, oh, the other thing that, sidebar back over here, the other thing, the reason why you have to charge it based on the number of hours and take into consideration your payroll taxes and all of that stuff, because here is just what you're paying them. So this is going to cover all of that extra stuff to make sure you calculate the price right. Um, you're going to also want to make sure that you can position your business to get a profit share and you want to have anywhere from 5 to 10% that you earn in profit for the business, right? And then you should give to causes, so you should have a business tithe. Okay. Doesn't necessarily have to go to a church, but to give the causes and things that give you inspiration because we want to keep that flow of circulation, right? And that should be 10%. So if you don't charge profit, all of this has to come out of this, which is always going to put you in the red. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you're already in the red. Because you're there for four hours, plus you're going back over everything, and you aren't getting paid. Correct. Right? Right. So, you know what? We, we would probably add that into this formula, too. Your salary, or your, for your time. So we're going to say, um, have you guys heard of Dan Kennedy? Yes. Okay, so he does in the... Base earnings target. He does in um, No BS Time Management for Entrepreneurs, he talks about base earnings target. So Dan, and, and I agree with him, he basically says we shouldn't charge by the hour, but we need to know what an hour of our time will be worth in order for us to achieve our goals. 
So based on your personal salary, so we take your personal salary, we divide it by 1760, that's the number of actual hours in a year an entrepreneur is actively working their business. I know if you guys remember from being in corporate America, it's 2280, it's less hours because although we leave our jobs and we do a lot more, we're not actually doing things that move the needle in our business. We're only doing that about this amount of time. And then we times it by the number of three to account for the fact that we're only a third percent productive during this time. Because we're doing a lot of organizing folders and color coding emails and stuff that's not actually moving the needle. So we would take this. So what do you want to earn from your business? I would like to earn from my business um, 300000 hmm, Okay. So somebody say 300000 and divide it by 1760 and times it by three. Step back one second. What's the 1760? 1760 is the number of hours in a year that as an entrepreneur we're actually working in our business. Okay. 511, so that means every time, every hour you're on site checking behind a person on your team, mm -hmm. you need to add $511.36 into this mix. Okay. Okay? So, like, I mean, the biggest thing for you right now to shift your business is you have to raise your rates. Do you have a clear profile? I know you're basing it on square footage of the the building, but have you really built out a profile of who you want the client to be and make it not just about the business size? Yeah. So I would recommend that you do that too. You need a very clear profile. Because that's going to drive all of your marketing activity. So right now, what are you doing? Like driving around and looking for buildings that are 5,000 square feet? Yes, and um, also I use a lead generator, which is... <laughs> I know, I just I still have to go back there so I don't say what I wanted to say. Okay, I'm sorry, and you use a lead generator? Yes, um, I use Thumbtacks and Home Advisor. Everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> okay, so Thumbtack... Let's just not do that anymore. Let's build a profile. Okay. And let's think about... What are the types of businesses for whom having an office space that is conducive to their success is important to them? Let's think about being able to position yourself as a person who not only cleans, but sets an environment for productivity and success. Like, what would happen to your marketing message if that's what you told people you do? So in, I, we don't just clean, we set an environment for productivity and success. Right? Are you a believer? Do you think you can walk up in some buildings and pray and pray over some seats and touch some seats? And I'm serious. I'm not being funny. And like, I'm being serious because this is differentiator. This is UVP. This is what yeah. sets you apart. This is why I'd be willing to pay you $1,250 for a one time cleaning. And after you come one time and things are better in my building, I put you on a retainer to start coming every single week, which this, by the way, is also way too low. So if you really want a seven-figure business, and you have to be honest with yourself because these price points are going to make you work way too hard for way too little. Do you feel like I just made over your business? Yes. All right, give her a round of applause. Purple hands, clap, everybody. Purple hands, clap. Woo! Okay, so that's your personal salary. Walked away from my corporate job and Ooh. relocated to Georgia three months ago. Oh. And Danielle's about to beat me up. <laughs> so, what does life transformation specialist mean, really? Um, it's for me, and the work that I'm doing with the women um, who come to me is helping them make transitions in their lives where they feel that there are blockages emotionally. Okay. That is stopping them, you know, preventing them from living a fulfilled and happy life. Okay. Uh, and what's your biggest challenge right now? Um, converting. 
Okay. So how many discovery sessions do you currently have per week? Getting clients. Getting discovery <laughs> sessions. <laughs> Let's keep on going. And look, Danielle, don't go hiding behind me. I need you right there. All up in here. No, I have to I have to channel my inner mean girl because sometimes she wants to say I'm, really I'm, nice I'm things. Okay. And I don't no, but LaVeda's recording and we got oh, a little good. Sorry, Everybody say hi to Facebook Live. <laughs> We're gonna smile this <laughs> time. <laughs> Okay, so getting clients and converting clients. So tell me, I guess, about I'm in transition and I am seeking to hire you. What do, what do I get in us working together? Um, in us working together, you will discover the limiting beliefs that you have. Okay. Perhaps it could be suffering from abandonment. Okay. Um, your, your parents abandon you, but you feel that every relationship that you in, the person is abandoned. Okay. So what I do is I dive deeper into what is going on inside because of this innate gift that I have of clairvoyancy. Okay. And, um, intuitive. And helping you discover how that is impacting every other area of your life. Okay. And um, part of that process is for, I do a lot, of, have them do a lot of writing mm -hmm. and that I interpret for them mm. of how it impacts their life. Okay. So I got some UVB out of that, UVP out of that. Um, and how does it work? Like, you have a package, you just have a per hour, like, how does it work? Um, I have sessions where either we would work together twice a month mm -hmm. or one time a month. Okay. I think I'm going to switch to one time a month. Um, but yeah, because is that really enough? Yeah, it's not enough. Yeah. And it is um, a commitment for three months. Okay. And in three months, do you really get them the breakthrough? Or does it take longer than three months? So, sidebar to everybody, don't be creating no packages that ain't gonna bring no breakthrough. No, I know that was terrible. Does. If I'm, oh, it does in three it months. Does it does. Okay. Three months. Okay, good. Yeah. Do you have people who stay on longer? I have people. Who so, stay how longer. often in three months are they good? And how, mu how much, how often do they need more time? Um, if they do the work, they need more time. If they don't need more time. Okay. If they don't do the work, it needs to be extended. So, are you so, in your. Pro, your profile and in your conversation with them, are you telling them about the level of work that is necessary? Yes, I am. To get the results. Okay. And then what do you charge? For the three month package for bi weekly, I think it's bi weekly, it's thirty nine ninety seven. Okay. And by like three thousand nine hundred. Okay. Yes. And then it's uh, there is nineteen ninety seven. Which is for, what is that? For once a month. Okay. But is it still but it's still for three months? Okay, but it's and still for three twice months. a month for three months. And mm -hmm. it's once a month for three months. Okay. And are you getting people who are paying these? I have had one person who paid the thirty nine ninety seven. Mm -hmm. And for the people who are doing the one time a month, are they are they getting the breakthrough? They're getting the breakthrough. They are getting the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So because they still have access to me even when we are not physically talking, having our sessions together. So how do they get access to you then? They would either send me an email message or if they send me that phone call or that text message, mm -hmm. I will make sure that it's included in our next session. Even at this price point? Even at that price point. Okay. So what do you want to earn revenue wise in your business? Revenue wise uh, per year. Per year, I'd love to earn two hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars a year. Okay. So is that your salary, or is that what you want the company to do? That is what I want the company to do. Okay. So how much are you I paying yourself that. out of that? I haven't even calculated. Okay, because you know you can't make two fifty and pay yourself two fifty because you got to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. You're gonna need team to support you, okay. all of that kind of stuff. And so I haven't in, gotten to the team. Okay. So in general, I will typically say whatever. You want to earn, your business needs to at least do double that okay. so that you can handle everything else. Okay. So ha what's the most you've made so far in a year? The most I've made, so not even close to that. Well, I already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> the most I've made in a year has probably been about $10,000. So $10,000 means that we're only really closing, what, one or two clients in yes. each of them? So what's the most amount of clients you've ever had at one time? The most amount of clients I had at one time is four. Okay, and where were you bandwidth wise? Are you full time in your business? Yes. Okay. I just transitioned. Okay. So um, what's your bandwidth? What can? How many clients can you have? Ooh. I could probably do about 
about 10 clients. 10 clients in a three month cycle? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have anything in place right now where as they're coming down on their three months, you have something else that they can go into? No. Do you want to continue working with clients or do you want to always start from scratch? I want to continue. Okay, so sidewall to everybody in the audience, 78% of your clients will continue to hire them if you continue to have reasons for them to hire you. Mm -hmm. So you need to create a problem progression. So once you get them out of their way, they're no longer suffering from the abandonment mm -hmm. issues or whatever the case mm -hmm. might be. Um, of the clients that you work worked with so far, what do they most likely want next? Um, they want something where they can do it on their own. Mm -hmm. Do what? Do do the, like continue the, the process on their own. Okay. So could you create like a home study module kind of thing for something like that? There's where I struggle. Okay. Talk and to me about the that. The reason why I struggle with that because I feel that I need to touch them. Okay. And I feel that the, the work that we do together doesn't have the same impact as if they're getting me um, on the phone call or do, the Zoom. Well, that's the true. They're, they're not going to get the same, but they've already broken through. Mm -hmm. So can you create a next step that doesn't require you or requires less of you so you can continue to serve these people, mm -hmm. but maybe get, introduce some leverage to you? If so, I can get out of my own way, yeah. Okay. So let's try this on for size. So let's say, be based on the nature of your work, you start with a private, they work with you. And this is the opposite of the way that I recommend that mm -hmm. you work. But, 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 but I will say this, anytime you work with a person uh, privately, that's the fastest path to cash, right? And I'm actually okay with your price points. I was actually pleasantly surprised. Um, so they work with you privately first. Now, in order for this to work, what I'm gonna suggest, is you're going to be having a have a, a nice pipeline to be constantly ro rotating 10 clients. Okay. So they work with you privately first for three months. And if you're doing 10 clients at a time, you should expect that six to seven of them should want to continue in some capacity. And you may have all of them, but six to seven. And then you put them into a group program. It could be a mastermind. It could be an inner circle. They might still, they get group interaction with you. So instead of a private Zoom call, maybe there's something group, maybe now there's a retreat that goes on, you know, one retreat, two retreats, or whatever the case might be, so that they get that continued support. If you think that three months is the amount of time that they need with you in order to get the breakthrough, I would probably make this a nine month. Because here's the other thing you're doing, you're consistentizing your income. Right. So that... It's harder to go find new clients, mm -hmm. but the way that this is set up, you're automatically going to have to make sure that you have a really cool marketing strategy that's keeping an influx of discovery sessions coming your way. Yes. If you want to close, in order to close 10 clients without knowing your conversion rates, and I'm sure you don't know them just because right. that's where you're struggling, mm -hmm. right now, at a minimum, I would say you need to talk to five times as many people. So for in every three-month cycle, you need to talk to 50 people. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you have a 20% conversion rate. That's like, mm -hmm. if not, you know, you work with me and we can help you to get that up. Mm -hmm. But if you talk to 50 people inside of that three months and that, and you break that out over the, the three months in that cycle. So you work with your clients, you have your business development and your sales conversation days, and you have those sessions. And then you do, you orchestrate your follow up in there so that when this cycle is finished and they're shifting into this, you're bringing a new cycle into this and you keep it running. So if we're doing this, let's just run the numbers to see if we have enough to create a quarter of a million dollars and see what else we might need to hit in. And then we can kind of talk about what that might look like and then maybe what this might look like. So if we're at 4,000 and we have 10 clients coming through, that's $40,000. We can do four of those three, yeah, four of those cycles in the year, that's $120,000. I am going to just pull a number out of the air for this group program because I haven't assessed all of the other stuff. 160. Was it? Oh, yeah, thank you. See, if I don't have a calculator, I'm a little, little off. Um, so I would probably say that this group program, it can be less because now you're serving six or seven people, and eventually it might be, you know, 14 or 21 people all mm -hmm. in this program. At a, in a rotation because they're coming in at any particular point in time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that this is just, we're going to make it $2,500. And that is low for a nine-month mastermind. Mm -hmm. I would eventually raise this up, but I think when you first introduce it, because you're not quite yet sure right. how they can do it without you, you mm -hmm. start here. And then eventually, this could by itself, these this will have to raise too. Right. But this by itself could be 
a $7,500 to $10,000 thing and what other things you put in it. So the first iteration may not have all of the stuff that it grows into in order to make it a 10000 because we can't just raise the price right. to make it 10000 without raising the value, right? And you always want to get value above what they pay you so that they can feel amazing about what it is that they're paying you. Right. But let's just call it 2500 for now. And so for each cycle, if we're closing seven people, 25 times seven, somebody? 2500 times seven? Okay, so we would also have four cycles of that a year, right? So times that by four for me. 70. 70 even? Yeah. So then 160 plus 70 is 230. So we only $20,000 short. <laughs> From where we need to be. So, get them to my so you can write a book. <laughs> you can do a live event, which would be butter money, because that's way over and above what you would need to do. But these are some of the things that you can do in order to be able to make it happen. So where are you finding your clients right now? Um, it's amazing. When I travel to the Caribbean, I meet my, my high-end clients I'm meeting in Anguilla. Okay. Um, other clients, lower-end ones I'm meeting on social media. Okay. So uh, lower in meaning this group yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. And what's the process that you're going through to get them to a $2,000 decision from social media? Um, just having the, the conversations the with conversation? them. And sometimes when they view the, the Facebook lives or what have you, they are um, I'm tapping into that mm -hmm. place that's been causing emotional pain. And so do you already have an... I don't like to use the word funnel because funnel goes in and it comes out. But do you already have an entry sequence after they watch your Facebook Live? How do you then convert them to get them to your website? Do you have something like that right now? No. Okay, so that's the next thing that you want to do. How, and you're doing Facebook Lives every single day? Oh, no. Oh, okay. I thought it's only in the Black CEO group, like doing them every day. Uh, I do the morning meditation in the Black CEO group. Okay, so you just do that just I for just Black CEO. That Are you Black getting CEO. clients from that? Um, I'm getting foot action from that, but not clients. Okay. So that's the other thing that I would want to have you build out to create a sequence that's going to turn that. Because anytime you're in front of a camera, mm -hmm. you should be getting people to have conversations with. Right. It's a numbers game. It's all about the conversation. So if we just run the raw numbers, like I said, raw numbers, five times that many will get you to your conversion rate. If you can't close in five, like, I'm just going to lay my hands on you because mm -hmm. you really should be able to. But if you're not, it's because you're not still not saying the right things. You're not following the sequence that I mapped out for you in order to be able to make it happen for you. But if you're doing that and you're following this, you write, you know, write a book or do another live event and that'll bring in the other 20,000. And this is, you know, entry level. I think your business could be much bigger than this. And this is not going to be as challenging. So if you're getting out to speak, if you're networking and connecting with people, you should always be having a flow in to be able to make sure you get those 50 sessions per, 50 discovery sessions per month. Does this help you? Very much so. Awesome. Yes. Give her a promo game pass! <laughs> Was that good? Yes. What did you guys get from that? It's all about the numbers. The number, yeah. It's all about the numbers. What else? It's also the thinking that goes into it. Mm -hmm. Associating with value with the input. 